Welcome to the first of seven lessons on assessing the accuracy of remotely sensed data. Right now, we're going to cover the introduction. Hello, my name is Russ Congleton. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a professor of remote sensing and GIS at the University of New Hampshire. I also am the director of New Hampshire View, part of the America View Consortium. I've been doing uh, research and accuracy assessment for over 40 years, and I've been able to uh, write many papers, a oh, dozen or so book chapters, and, and uh, actually three books you can see on the side here related to uh, accuracy assessment. And so published our first book with my friend Cass Green back in 1999, and then a second edition of that book in 2009. And then um, just last year, we did a revision with a lot more information, especially on positional accuracy assessment. I've had the privilege of being able to work both in academia, researching these topics, but also a lot with private industry, with an environmental mapping company, um, applying the lessons to real world applications. And so I really like to be able to share not only the, the concepts, but also the practical applications of this. And through my career, I've had a, a privilege of uh, consulting with many different groups, federal, state agencies, um, lots of different universities, all kinds of people actually all over the world, and um, it's been my privilege. So anyway, that's enough about me. Let's get on to what we're going to cover um, in these uh, seven lessons on accuracy. So here we go. Here's the organization. I'm going to divide the lessons into these seven parts, so there'll be little modules for you to um, watch as you like. Uh, the first part here is just an introduction, so we all are on the same page and we know where we're going. Then there'll be two lessons on positional accuracy assessment. The first will be an overview, and the second we'll talk about methods and analysis. Then there'll be three lessons on thematic accuracy assessment. Again, an overview, the second one on reference data collection, and then the third one on methods and analysis. And then lastly, there'll be a little summary and conclusions module uh, to tie it all up into a nice, neat package. So. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of map accuracy assessments that you can do. There's qualitative assessments, there's quantitative assessments, and there are some things that kind of fall in between. You may have heard of some of these before. So qualitative assessments, we're talking about something like uh, logical consistency. That's where you would look at your map and you would go, does it make sense? Are the things there that are supposed to be there, um, you know, th does it look good to me? And, and you want to make sure that, that that's the case, okay? And then another way of qualitatively assessing your map would be incompleteness. Is everything there that's supposed to be there? Is it obvious that things are missing? And again, it's a qualitative assessment. It's a looks good assessment, and those things are important. You, you should do that before you ever begin a quantitative assessment. And then there are some other things that you can do that uh, sort of get you part of the way there. I call those the between qualitative and quantitative. And this is where you do some kind of a similarity analysis where you impose one data set on top of another and you can see where there are going to be issues in the maps. Uh, and that's a pretty powerful tool to use. <clears throat> and then there's a, what we call error budgeting or uncertainty kind of analysis where you try to anticipate where the problems are going to occur, where the errors might be introduced and then you find ways to, to mitigate that. You would obviously concentrate on those things that are um, most easy to correct and most important simultaneously. And I've written a number of things about that. In these modules, we're gonna concentrate on quantitative accuracy assessment, okay? So that's why the red circle here, we're gonna look at positional accuracy assessment from a quantitative standpoint, and then we're gonna look at thematic accuracy assessment from a quantitative standpoint. So I want to make sure we're understanding that uh, even these modules are not uh, totally comprehensive. Uh, you could have 25 modules and we still wouldn't be um, done with this subject. So trying to give you the, the basic detailed information that you need to get going in the right direction. So here's the caveat of this whole thing. There's no single assessment strategy. Wish there was. Wish I could say do A, then do B, then do C, 
uh, but it just does not follow a simple recipe. There's just too many issues and considerations that you need to think about. Okay? And that's why it's important that you plan that you know, from the very beginning. Just to give you a feel for that, we're going to look at a flow chart for both doing a positional accuracy assessment and a thematic accuracy assessment, just at the beginning here to give you a sense of all the considerations and issues and things that you need to think about um, when, you're, when you're considering doing a, an assessment, okay? So first, let's start with positional accuracy assessment, a little bit less complex than thematic, but still pretty complex. Okay, and so you can see there's a number of things that you need to think about here. Also notice that there's some things in common between the two processes, so that's important to know as well. Okay, so when you're assessing positional map accuracy, you need to think about the sources of error, what, what's going to cause problems when you try to do the assessment. You need to think about the classification scheme, okay, and then you need to think about the reference data collection. Reference data collection is the biggest deal, both in positional and thematic accuracy assessment. And there are a whole bunch of things to think about there. There are what we call some other considerations, and typically we're talking about the source of the reference data. Where do I get it from? Do I go collect it myself? Can I get it from another map? Um, can I get it from somebody else? And then if I'm gonna collect it myself, how do I sample for that? What sample size? How many samples do I need? What sampling scheme should I use? Should I just use a random sample approach? Do I, how do I make sure that my samples are distributed around my map? How do I think about spatial autocorrelation? Spatial autocorrelation has to do with um, the relationship between, in this particular case, errors in my map. Are they spatially autocorrelated? Are they correlated with each other? And therefore I have to space things apart. And then once I have all that, then I have to start computing the you know, statistics themselves, the measurements of accuracy. And traditionally for positional accuracy assessment, we're talking about the calculation of something called root mean square error, or MSE. And then in the United States, we use NSSDA, the National Standard for Spatial Data Accuracy. Um, and there are other ways of doing that as well, and we'll get into those details. But you can see this is a pretty complex process lots of things to think about. And if you forget one of those or make a mistake, you're going to um, either be very inefficient, cost yourself a whole bunch of money, have to go back and start again, all kinds of issues. All right, let's go over to thematic accuracy. You'll see that this flow chart looks similar, although there are some differences. Okay, again, need to think about sources of error. Later on in this presentation, I'll show you what I mean by that. You need to understand the classification scheme. Since you're making a thematic map, you're classifying that map into um, map labels, map classes. Obviously, the classification scheme is going to be very, very important. Reference data collection is even more complex in thematic map accuracy assessment. You can see we have more other considerations. Not only is the source important, but when we collect the data, it could be important. Do we need to collect it when the imagery is being taken? Do, can we do it a year later? What's the deal with that? And then how do we ensure consistency? Uh, make sure there's no bias. If we've got multiple people collecting the data, how do we make sure we're objective? Okay. When we get to the sampling side of reference data collection, it's a little bit more complex. Again, what's the sample unit? We didn't worry so much about the sample unit in positional map accuracy because it's simply a point on the ground. A sample unit for a thematic accuracy cannot be a point. It needs to actually have um, a spatial component to it. And we'll talk more about that. What sample size do I need? In other words, how many samples? Again, what scheme should I use? Is it random? What's going on with that? And the incorporation of spatial autocorrelation. Then when I have all that reference data, I can finally do my analysis, my calculation of statistics, and I do that through my error matrix creation. But there's a bunch of questions there. Is this for a single date of imagery, or am I doing something with a change analysis? Am I doing a, a fuzzy accuracy assessment? And we'll introduce that um, later on in these modules, or am I just using a traditional, or what we call deterministic 
uh, error matrix. Once I have the matrix, then I can calculate descriptive statistics like overall accuracy, producer's accuracy, user's accuracy. And then once I have that, I can do some basic analysis techniques, things like um, testing if one error matrix is different than another and therefore one technique better or normalizing the matrix. There's all kinds of things um, that can be done. So again, we're going to hit all of these things through these different modules. Um, so stay tuned, but I wanted to make sure that you had a nice overview at this point of all the things we're talking about so you can realize it's not a recipe, it's not simple, it has a lot of things to consider. Okay. So the goal of any mapping accuracy assessment is what? It's to balance statistical validity with practical application. You can design the most complex statistical analysis possible, but if nobody could ever do it, if you couldn't afford to do it, if it took too much time to do it, then it's a very, very nice academic exercise. And I really like reading about those things. But if nobody's going to do it, then what good is it? Okay, so if it's not going to be valid, why do it? But if you can't afford to do it right, why do it either? Okay, so there's a trade off there. You're walking this tightrope, <clears throat> as you can see this gentleman doing here, and you've got to balance that. You want to make sure it's good to be statistically right. At the same time, you want to be able to achieve it without going bankrupt at the same time. <clears throat> Therefore, you've got lots of choices, lots of considerations, lots of decisions to make along the way. And so you have to document your process. Okay? You can't just give the error matrix out there. Or you can't just give the root mean square error and tell us nothing about how you did it. Okay? We can't judge your assessment. We don't know, it's not, we didn't know you followed step A and then B and then C because you couldn't, you didn't, okay? So you have to document your process. Why, why do you wanna do an accuracy assessment? Well, most of us really wanna know how well we're doing. If we spend all this time making a map, I wanna make sure I know how good it is, okay? But more importantly than that probably is maybe I wanna compare one method to another. I've developed a new algorithm and I wanna test it. And so I do uh, make a map with my old traditional algorithm. I make the same map with a new algorithm that I've developed and I build error matrices and then I can compare one to the other. Perhaps it's as simple as I want to understand the errors so that they can be corrected. I've got some kind of confusion going on that's very evident and I need to go back and, and fix that. So I need to identify those errors. Probably most importantly, I want to use the information from that map in some decision-making process, right? I'm going to bring it into a GIS. I'm going to bring it into a decision support system. I'm going to use that map for policy making, you know, whatever. Um, I want to know how good that map is. Otherwise, my decisions could be garbage because I'm basing my decision on garbage. Okay, so that's important. And lastly, and probably these days very commonly, um, it may be part of the contract if you are doing this for a client or for somebody else, they may specify what the accuracy um, limits um, have to be. Okay, so lots of reasons why you need to do an accuracy assessment. Here's just a quick graph that shows you some ideas about sources of error. The whole idea here is to just see that when you start out, the errors are really, really small, and as you go around that circle in a clockwise direction, the errors tend to compound and get bigger and bigger and bigger as you go. And so doing some kind of uncertainty analysis, thinking about you know, these errors ahead of time is really very important. And you can see that there's you know, issues with the acquisition of the imagery, there's issues with the data processing, there's issues with the analysis. You might do some kind of raster vector or vector to raster conversion. You can actually make errors in the assessment process itself. There might be things that you introduce in the final product. And then, of course, there's the decision making and the implementation. Okay, And so don't get worried about all the details here. The goal with this slide is just to understand that error can increase significantly. And the more you can control that, uh, the better off you're going to be. All right. So what did we learn in this lesson? Well, first we learned that there's going to be seven lessons or seven modules presented here. This was just the first one. Um, I showed you some flow charts to give you an overview of all the issues, considerations, and things you need to think about 
when you're doing either positional or thematic accuracy assessment. I described the goals of a map accuracy assessment. Remember, we're going to balance statistical validity with practical application. We talked about why you would do an accuracy assessment, and there's five reasons, and the best one is that you want to make decisions. Based on that, you want to put that information into some decision support system. And then lastly, we looked at the idea that there are a number of sources of error in the assessment, and the more that you can control those, um, the happier you're going to be, the less errors are going to be in the process. So next time, we're on to uh, positional accuracy assessment. Uh, thanks for joining me.